All right, everyone, in today's lesson, we're going to take uh, several shots that I took down uh, in Winthrop this weekend and merge them into a single photo. So you can see here in Lightroom, I've got around 10 or so shots of a plane landing. And you can see what the final result was. Uh, I posted this all over social media, so you might have seen this. So I figured I'd show you actually how to produce an image like this. So let's take a look at the original images. Uh, first off, I got an image of the Boston skyline. I had it framed up. Uh, obviously, planes were landing, and I knew where they were landing, so I fr framed up the shot appropriately and uh, set up my tripod and so on. So from here, you can see that uh, the plane's coming into sight and coming down, and each of these images, uh, the plane is in a different position. Uh, I kind of wish that I had taken a couple more shots, although it, as the plane got lower it would have interfered with the skyline, but I do certainly regret not getting the shots all the way down until the plane landed. Uh, you can see the EXIF data on the right side of my screen. I was at ISO 100, 145 millimeters at f2.8 and 1 250th of a second. So uh, let's go ahead and come back to our grid view and what we'll do is we'll take all these shots with the plane and we'll export those to um, JPEG files to work in Photoshop. And I've already done that. I don't want to sit through the time that it takes to do that. So I'm going to pop open uh, Adobe Bridge and we've got all the photos and I'm going to select them all and just uh, open those up using the load files into Photoshop layers. It does some of the work for me, which is kind of nice. So it's actually going to load them up into their own separate layers. Okay, so we've got all our files loaded up and the first thing I like to do is kind of start taking a look at um, how they're going to look. So you can see this first shot, it's just about at the top of the screen, so we can leave that shot in. However, if we adjust the opacity down, you can see that there's overlap between the first shot and the second shot because now we're uh, taking the opacity of the top layer down, exposing a little bit of that second layer, and I can't use this image because, quite frankly, I just don't want the um, I, I don't want these shots to over um, to, to be on top of each other. So I'm going to um, take that layer and hide it and now you can see we're shining through or exposing through the next layer down and that does work for me. So what I'll do is create a layer mask on my first layer and now I'm going to uh, kind of draw in at 100% opacity uh, this other plane. So it's essentially punching that plane through into this layer okay so there we've done that and once we've done that we want to make sure we bring the opacity back up to 100 percent and I can take these first three layers and use command E and merge them together and essentially I'm going to repeat this process for the remainder of the layers so we're going to drop the opacity down here and you can see again we have an overlap issue so I'm not going to use that particular picture but instead I'll use the next one I'm going to punch a layer mask through and draw in at 100%. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to bring our opacity back to 100 and merge these three layers. And again, bring that opacity down. We're not going to use that layer. We can use this one. It's a little tight this time, but we can use it. So again, one more layer mask. Draw it in and merge those three together. Oop, bring our opacity back and merge those three together. Okay, let's do it again. Nope, we're not going to use that one, but we'll use this one. Layer mask it, draw it in, Oop, just punching it through. Bring our opacity back and merge those together and I don't think I'm going to use that last one. Let's just drop the opacity. Yeah, there's going to be too much overlap, so I'm just I'm not going to use that last one. I'll just merge those together. So now I've got all the airplanes from that set of shots, and from here on I'm going to just do what I normally would do, which would be uh, pop into uh, Nick software, and I'm going to use the Color Effects Pro. Uh, on this particular image, I believe I use the Detail Enhancer. Uh, it's probably still set to what I had used before. Uh, yeah, I believe it is. So the, uh, the detail extractor. So you can see that kind of gives that HDR like look uh, there. So we'll go ahead and uh, hit OK. Let that run. 
And I did a couple uh, fine tuning with the um, uh, uh, noise reduction in the sky, and I did do some sharpening uh, along the um, skyline and in the airplanes. Uh, but I don't know that I want to get into that in this tutorial. It was just some fine tuning using Nix Define and Nix uh, Sharpener tools. Uh, but you can see this is pretty much what the final result that I posted was. So thanks for checking this out. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you like my work, I encourage you to visit either my Google Plus or my Facebook site. Uh, circle me or like me. I definitely appreciate it, and I'll return the favor. So thanks again, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon.